Hail, Holy Mother, who gave birth to the King, who rules heaven and earth forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, Lord God, that we, your servants, may rejoice in unfailing health of mind and body, and through the glorious intercession of Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, may we be set free from present sorrow and come to enjoy eternal happiness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, someone may say, How are the dead raised? With what kind of body will they come back? You fool! What you sow is not brought to life unless it dies. And what you sow is not the body that is to be but a bare kernel of wheat, perhaps, or of some other kind. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown corruptible. It is raised incorruptible. It is sown dishonorable. It is raised glorious. It is sown weak. It is raised powerful. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual one. So too it is written, The first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam, a life-giving spirit. But the spiritual was not first, rather the natural and then the spiritual. The first man was from earth, earthly, the second man from heaven. As was the earthly one, so also are the earthly, and as is the heavenly one, so also are the heavenly. Just as we have borne the image of the earthly one, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly one. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will walk in the presence of God in the light of the living. I will walk in the presence of God in the light of the living. Now I know that God is with me, in God whose promise I glory, in God I trust without fear. What can flesh do against me? I will walk in the presence of God in the land of the living. I am bound, O God, by vows made to you. Your thank offerings I will fulfill, for you have rescued me from death, my feet too from stumbling, that I may walk before God in the light of the living. 
I will walk in the presence of God in the light of the living. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Blessed are they who have kept the word with a generous heart and yield a harvest through perseverance. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Lord, you, Lord. When a large crowd gathered with people from one town after another, journeying to Jesus, he spoke in a parable. A sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some seed fell on the path and was trampled, and the birds of the sky ate it up. Some seed fell on rocky ground, and when it grew, it withered for lack of moisture. Some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew with it and choked it. And some seed fell on good soil, and when it grew, it produced fruit a hundredfold. After saying this, he called out, Whoever has ears to hear ought to hear. Then his disciples asked him, What is the meaning of this parable? Asked him what the meaning of this parable might be. He answered, Knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of God has been granted to you, but to the rest they are made known through parables, so that they may look but not see, and hear but not understand. This is the meaning of the parable. The seed is the word of God. Those on the path are the ones who have heard, but the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts, that they may not believe to be saved. Those on rocky ground are the ones who, when they hear, receive the word with joy, but they have no root. They believe only for a time and fall away in time of temptation. As for the seed that fell among thorns, they are the ones who have heard, but as they go along, they are choked by the anxieties and riches and pleasures of life, and they fail to produce mature fruit. But as for the seed that fell on rich soil, they are the ones who, when they have heard the word, embrace it with a generous and a good heart, and bear fruit through perseverance. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. What you sow is not the body that is to be, but a kernel, a bare kernel of wheat. The words that St. Paul spoke in the first reading, describing our current body compared to the resurrected body. I want to make sure we understand what he's saying here. 
Do we understand that we can hardly imagine what awaits us after this frail body dies? After this body is sown into the ground, and after Jesus comes again and raises this body to life, just as the sun raises a stalk of wheat from a dead kernel. The two are so different. A bag of seeds on one hand, and a field of harvest on another. Even more so will be the difference between our bodies and the bodies that we will have in the resurrection. Let us not think that they will be the bodies that Adam and Eve had before the fall, right? Before the fall, they had perfect, natural bodies. They were in full control, and as a result, they were truly free to be human. But as great as it would be to have the effects of sin wiped out, and we be restored to that natural perfection in the Garden of Eden, this apparently isn't good enough for God. God wants more for us. And so he has decided to make our bodies perfect beyond human nature. He has decided to give our bodies a share in divinity, in Godhood. Jesus and Mary, they already have their godly, resurrected bodies. Over the past 2,000 years, Mary has appeared to numerous people. And it always results in some sort of description, right, of a woman, beautiful beyond their words could possibly describe. Jesus' resurrected body, we are told, right, could walk through walls, and pretty much you know, teleport, and all this other stuff. That, yeah, it's just obviously not natural human bodies. And we know that, of course, during his earthly life, he walked on water and did this type of stuff, you know, fasted for 40 days in the desert. He still had kind of an unresurrected body then. Those were feats of God's, the Father's divine power granted to him. They were miracles in a way. But after the resurrection, these things just became a part of who Jesus is as man, right? His human body could do these things without miracles, if that makes sense. Now, of course, these are still pitiful descriptions of what the resurrected body will be like, but they are kind of the only thing that we can accept right now, that can maybe give us an idea of what awaits us. And what awaits us is destined for you, right? You particularly. Whatever you have now, right, your body that is, it will be glorious, it will be different, but still you. And you can't really imagine it, but that's okay. Right now, we still have just a seed, but that seed will mature into something greater than we can possibly imagine. However, let us not forget that what you sow is not brought to life unless it dies. So let it die. Do not hold on to anything of this passing body, but sacrifice it on this altar as often as you can. And on the last day, you will become divine. Your body will be resurrected. Is that not worth dying for? Let us present our needs and petitions to God, our most loving Father, with faith that he will not only hear, but answer us. For Pope Francis, that he may be our peg in a sure spot, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for government leaders, that they may work for the common good with the virtues of knowledge, and understanding, and prudence, and wisdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this faith community, that we may hope in our resurrected bodies. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who will be aborted today, and for their mothers and their fathers, may the Lord heal these deep wounds in our society. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the souls in purgatory, that through our prayers and penance they may deserve their eternal reward, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Hear us, we pray, O God, our most loving Father, we who have been filled with the Holy Spirit. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With all the Spirit and country, Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we ask, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings that, through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of your Son, no petition may go unanswered. No request be made in vain through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and to praise, bless, and glorify your name in veneration of the blessed ever Virgin Mary. For by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, she conceived your only begotten Son, and without losing the glory of virginity, brought forth into the world the eternal light, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation, May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. We may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant us peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, so we may be... as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever.
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Blessed is the womb of the Virgin Mary, which bore the Son of the Eternal Father. Let us make our act of spiritual communion. The most born and most beloved of Jesus, I firmly believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to you as if you were already there. Let us pray. As we receive this heavenly sacrament, we beseech you, O Lord, your mercy, that we who rejoice in commemorating the Blessed Virgin Mary may, by imitating her, serve worthily the mystery of our redemption, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks. 
Today's Mass is offered for the living and deceased members of the Knights of Columbus and its benefactors, for the repose of soul of Frank and Josephine Romero, for the departed souls not in heaven, for the repose of the souls of Leo Leroy Chico Ramirez, for the special intention of Michael J. Senna on his birthday, for the repose of the soul of Edward Eddie Martinez. <laughs> 